Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some Afana pelma species. Now, I've had people ask me for updates on my Afana pelmas, and usually what I do is every couple of years or so I do an update on them because honestly, they don't grow very quickly at all. These guys are quite old right now, and a few of them aren't even pushing two inches yet. So uh, of all the slower growing species, we can talk about the Gramostola, the Brachypelma. The Afana pelma, for me at least, have been the slowest growing. That's not to say it's not worth the wait. They are gorgeous spiders. I love a Fonopelma species. It's just recognize that if you pick up some slings, it may be quite a while until they are robust adults. And by quite a while, I mean many, many years. So in this episode, I have one that des is desperate need of a rehouse. I meant to do it a while ago, but it molted and then it was in pre-molt again. So now we're going to get a new house. And then the other ones, I just want to kind of change up their digs a little bit. The containers they're in, it's got a little small for them. Uh, they don't seem to be able to dig the way I'm guessing they would like to dig. So we're going to put them into something a a little bit bigger. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at the rehousing of four little Afana pelma species. So every once in a while, I get people to ask me for an update on my Afana pelma species. These are the spiders that I keep that never grow. I actually, every time I work with them, I have the never growing spider song stuck in my head, but it goes to never ending story. I realized earlier we were walking, I had never ending story. It's because all I can think of is these things never grow. <laughs> I've had them for, I don't know how many years. Last time we moved these, was in 2021. I don't think I recorded it because I went back to find the video. But what we have them in here, are these are these cylindrical acrylic containers. You can get them off a container store or uh, there's a couple different places. Some you can find them on Amazon, but they're a little more expensive. But they're about a quart overall. I like them for some slings, but it's I, I want to get them out of here. They've kind of dug the substrate, settled a bit. They're not able to burrow very much. There's not a lot of room. So what we're going to put them into is these over here. Let me get one of these in the camera. These are the M design, what are they? Kit M design plastic home storage containers. They are hinged. I used to use a shallower version of these that they had gaps underneath here that had to be closed up and the spiders could get out. These at least do not have the gaps. I ventilate them. We have about eh, two inches of substrate in here, cork bark hide, little plant, some fake leaves. The substrate is my own mixture. It is peat cocoa fiber. And I believe there was a little sand, a little sphagnum moss ground up or cut up into it. And I did keep the lower levels moist. I found that with a fauna pelma species, even though we often write about them being more arid species, they will burrow down and there's moisture in the ground there. So I always try to keep the bottom layer at least a corner moist or so. And I found that sometimes it causes them to go ahead and burrow. And that's kind of the behavior you want. You want them to feel comfortable, especially at this size. As they get older, they might be more out and about. But these are guys that are found in burrows. So you want to make sure they have that ability. Hence why I want to put them into these, which are a little bit bigger. Now, a word, I was going to put a link. Everybody always asks me when I put stuff up, could you get a link to it? They don't sell them anymore. This is the thing with Amazon and these M design enclosures. The other set that I had that was shorter, they stopped selling those. So I got these bigger ones. They were selling these for a while. I just went on currently unavailable. I doubt they will come back in. So I will let people know if they come back in because I love them. I have probably about 20 of them around here. Love them for, you know, juveniles and such. Extra depth allows me to, you know, set them up for burrowers, but they're not making them anymore. So what we're going to start off with here is the, I think we'll start with, what do we got in here? The Calcodas. I have the Calcodas here. I do not have the Calcodas here. We have the Calcodas here. Hopefully, Billy can get some uh, pictures of this because this one's a beauty. This one I got back, oh gosh, when was it? November 2018. It was a second instar sling. And amazingly, it has grown very, very quickly compared to the other species here. I have another Calcodas, Nikki, obviously, but he knows that I picked that one up at about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, 10 years ago. And right now she's only about three inches. This one's already about two and a half inches. So she's caught up to Nikki. So getting a lot faster growth rate with this one, which is excellent because again, they're such pretty spiders. And this one's had quite a little attitude, not defensive at all, but definitely has been pretty bold. So we're going to go ahead and get her, put her into the new enclosure, which now that I'm looking at it, she's probably not going to be in there all that much longer. I probably should have put her in one of the larger M designs. But we'll put her in there for the time being. Uh, she'll do fine for a molt or two. I don't think she's due for a molt for a while. She just molted uh, a few months ago, and she's still kind of fattening up. But that'll be it for the time being. And then, obviously, we'll do another update at some point and move her into something bigger. So let's get her into the new enclosure. She is gorgeous. I love the, the Calcodas. <clears throat> yeah, she's a little – I told you she's a little bolder. Look at her. She's like, yeah, no way, man. Man. Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. Stop it. 
So if you want to go up this way, we can do this. No. No. Do you? Oh. No, no. You can't have my Dude. brush. <laughs> Stop. Just go in here. You're going to like these new digs better. It'll allow you to burrow. Oh, just realized I caught on the edge. And there she is. Was really shocked at how early she started showing her adult colors at about an inch and a half, maybe. She molted and had some adult colors, which, again, compared to the other ones we're about to rehouse that I've had for, you know, eight years or so, whatever it is, mature, got those juvenile colors a lot quicker, all right, a lot more quickly. Is quicker a word? Yeah. Quicker, quickly? I think I'd know. I'm shot. More quick. More quick. <laughs> I think quickly, quicker is a word. No, you can't live in there. Yeah, right. There you go. All right. And yes, they will be getting little water dishes. They tend to fill them up, but I do like to give them water dishes. And what I usually do with these guys, again, I keep the things up top is bone dry. We, we won't. Uh, the trick is not to moisten all this up, but I do like letting some water run down one of the corners and moistening down some of the lower levels because I have find, again, that will encourage that burrowing behavior. They'll go down. It'll be a little dry up top. They'll go down, try to find the moist substrate. And then as far as how to keep these shut, what I usually do is I stack them up and I have something either setting on top of them or I just use a piece of tape to hold them shut. Just make Make sure you use tape that doesn't peel up in the middle of the night because sometimes the stuff seems to be stuck really well. And depending on what you use, it actually slowly but surely peels off. You don't want an escape. So there's one down, a Calcotas. She is done. Now we're going to get this out of the way and this out of the way. Sometimes what I do is I have them stack too deep and I have some of the deli cups and I put one of the deli cups on the top one, which holds them shut. Works great. You can buy the hasps and put them on there, but it, it makes it so you can no longer stack them. So it kind of ruins some of the convenience of using these. You're going over here. All right. So the next one's up. We have the A moderatum, which people, I think these are ones people pointed out last time. It's a real grande gold, I think it is. And these don't look like A moderatums. I don't know what they are. We shall see. I'm still holding out hope that they will miraculously molt and pick up some of those golden colors on the legs. But maybe not. So we'll have to see how it goes. But they've been growing super slowly. I picked these up in mid-2017. And at that time, they were about a half an inch or so, or 1.27 centimeters. And they haven't grown all that much since then. So we keep doing these updates. And there's not much to show. Although this one does got some color on it. Hopefully, it'll show up. And hopefully, somebody who's kept other Afana Pelma will chime in and say, all right, I had this species. And it kind of looked like that at that time. We'll see how it goes. Mm, there, I'm helping Dilly here. There we go. So you can see kind of a pale carapace, got some brown in the legs. I don't know. We'll have to see what it is. I got a funny feeling it's not going to be moderatum, which kind of sucks because we've raised them for so many years and to not have them be what they're supposed to be kind of stinks. But whatever they are, it's probably a species I don't have or don't realize I have. So that'll be fine too. All right, how are we going to do this now? You're going to go right up top. No? You ride the brush? Oh. Holy crap. Man. That was a... All right. Use this brush. <laughs> Hold them on for dear life. Stop. Oh. Whoa. Just twist this out. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Ooh, a spicy one. Fresh. I like it. They're so cute. There we go. So it looks like almost a goldish tan carapace. Nope. Let me click on this, try to get. There we go. Kind of a goldish carapace, but the legs, I would think by now at this size, although this one's still probably. Maybe two inches total, a little less than two inches, not full juvenile color. So I'm thinking with the next moat, we'll probably get a better idea of what the heck this is. And at that point, what I'll probably do is put up a short and go, all right, guys, what do you got? Who's kept this before? What does it look like? Because I'm not sure, but I doubt it's going to be the moderatum, but I'm holding out hope. So there we go. That one's back in. Again, hopefully what will happen is they'll go into 
here, do some digging and burrowing. Again, the bottom layer of this, I, when I set these up, I set them up like a month ago and the substrate was completely moist. So what I did was put them on a shelf and let the top layers dry up a bit, kept the bottom levels moist. We're going to get rid of this. Yeah, I'm trying to toy with whether or not I'm going to use these again. I just don't like the rounder ones as much, but I guess they worked okay. These guys originally were in the Matchbox car, the Hot Wheels containers you get. The little ones, I had them in there for a while. I don't use those anymore. I don't like they dry out way too quickly. This is going to be Moderatum number two. Kind of went crazy with the size of this cork bark, but it'd be nice if this one would just stay on the cork bark that's in here. Mm. Here we go. A little piece of home. So we'll leave that in there for now. So you want to see that one looks almost exactly the same. So this one's a little bit smaller. Mr. Mystery Moderatum. All right, so there she is looking very much, or he is looking very much like the other one. So not much different there. This one's just a shade smaller, a tad smaller. So again, we'll see what happens when it molts out. Hopefully, we'll see some nice golden legs, although I'm starting to doubt it. All right, I'll actually put this over here so it's not teetering. The next one up, we have my Fauna Palma by Colorado or Mexican blood leg. This one, I was toying with whether or not to put it in one of these because it's still a little bit small. Let me open this up. A little bit smaller than the other ones, but I'm thinking after the next molt, it's gonna put on a decent amount of size, in which case it'd be perfectly sized for this enclosure. So we're gonna go with it. The only thing I just wanna be careful of is this one, it's been in this enclosure here. It hasn't been able to burrow, but I've been able to keep track of it better. This one will allow it to burrow. I just don't want a situation where it burrows and can't get food. My Aburica actually burrowed at one point, filled in its burrow, sat at the bottom, did not come up to get food. And when I shined the flashlight in one day, I realized it was very, very skinny. So it did not come up. This happens every once in a while, usually only with slings or smaller juveniles where the spider burrows, seals itself up, goes to molt and then does not come back up. The thought process is that in the wild, they might find stuff underground that they could actually eat so they don't need to come up. Um, some people have said that they're so deep that they don't recognize that there's something above them or how to get up. I don't know what it is, but it happens on occasion. So just keep your eye out. If you have a burrowing species that you know is molted and is not coming up to eat, you may have to open up the hole a little bit. Usually what I do is I moisten the area around where the den entrance is and then you know, squirt a little, whoop, Squirt a little water in there, moisten up, use the back of a paintbrush to open it up a little bit, and I pre-kill something and put it back up there. So what will happen is one of two things. The spider comes up, closes it back up, doesn't eat, in which case it's not eating, or what usually ends up happening, the spider comes up, grabs the prey item, and eats. So this one here, I wonder if we can... Eh. Hmm, so cute. Mm. Oop, oop, oop. Sorry, buddy. I'm gonna go right through right in there. There you go. No, you can't take that with you. No, I guess you are taking that with you. You can have the charcoal. There we go. So cute. And this is the one where I had one that I got the same time. I got those moderatums and my Hensi that I actually rehoused off camera a couple of days ago. And they, it was growing great. It hit right around an inch and a quarter, had some adult colors to it. It looked beautiful. And I went to go feed it. It had been a few days after the molt. It was sitting splayed out right on the substrate. Looked great. I dropped the prey item in. It didn't budge. I was like, what the heck's going on? So I kind of poked it with a brush. It was dead. It was the weirdest thing. Still don't know what the heck happened. It was doing great right up to that point. It was heartbreaking because like sometimes when stuff dies, you go, all right, this happened, this happened. I thought the thing had molted fine. It seemed to molt fine. It seemed to be in good shape. It had access to water, everything it would needed, it needed, but it just didn't survive. So that one still bummed me out. So I ended up picking this one up. Uh, when was this one? Pick this one up back in March or April, late March, early April, 2022. We've got from Caleb Hill, who was at a reptile convention we went to. Very excited to pick this one up. 
So there they are. I love my Afana Pelmas. Um, I don't know if I'll be getting many more Afana Pelmas, unfortunately, because I'm getting old. And the idea of getting one of these things, I could be in my 70s by the time they're adults. So we'll see. I do love Afana Pelmas. I do want to keep as many of them as I can. But again, because that slow growth rate, I have to be cognizant of the fact that I'm not getting any younger. And if they're taking this long, you know, this one here, it's growing decently. Some of the other ones, they aren't even two inches yet. And I've had them for eight years, seven years. That's a long time to grow up. So we'll play it by ear. Maybe I'll get a couple more. While I'm still a little bit young and spry, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so there we go. Fauna Pelma update on some of the Fauna Pelma species. Doing great and still not growing very quickly. So as you can see from this footage I'm about to show here, Three of them have actually done a great deal of digging, which is great. That was kind of one of the reasons I wanted to get them into something different because they've been digging around in those little enclosures and not making much ground on their digging because there just wasn't enough space for them to really get down and dirty with it. Now, the A. Calcotas, as you'll see, has not done any burrowing yet. We'll see how that goes. That is one that when I was putting her into this or him into this new enclosure, I was kind of thinking maybe she should go into something a little bit bigger like the one I have Nikki in. We'll see how it goes. If she looks like she's not going to burrow or if she looks at any time stressed maybe we'll give her something a little bit bigger but she did eat the other day which was great so apparently she's not too stressed now one thing i do want to mention as far as beginner species and a lot of fauna pelmas make good beginner species that when you pick these guys up as teeny tiny slings just recognize it could be many years before you have something that looks like a quote-unquote tarantula on your hands and what happens with a lot of us is we pick up these guys as slings as we get into the hobby we're like we're going to grow as this tarantula grows but usually what ends up happening is we get impatient, we pick up a bunch of other spiders, and by the time these guys reach adults, we've raised many other species to adulthood. I know that's happened to me. So just keep that in mind. Can they make great beginner species? Yes, but the slow growing aspect of it and the fact they start off so teeny tiny can turn off some folks. So just a heads up, I always try to tell folks if you're looking for one of these species to start with, try to get one that's an inch or larger because it seems like after they hit the inch mark, they tend to molt a little more frequently and put on a little more size, which can make it easier to deal with for somebody who's just getting into the hobby and maybe a little terrified of keeping track of a teeny tiny sling. So that will do it for this one. You guys know the routine. If you liked it up and subscribe, I appreciate it. Click it up there. I'm going to put a couple other, I'll put a couple other Afana Pelma videos over here. You take the time to comment. I'll take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days. Guys, stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.